bought this valve tester um, today uh, on eBay, sold for spares or repair. It's a, uh, a Connor uh, 223. Uh, Connor were a, uh, an American company. Looks like around in the sort of 70s, making um, sort of quite good quality kit uh, bits of test equipment, very similar to Heath kit, on the same par by the looks of it. Um, and it was, as I say, it was sold for spares or repair. Um, it was a, a buy it now or best off, and I offered them not a lot of money for it really. Certainly for the prices they're going for in the UK, the valve testers are ridiculously expensive in the UK, whereas you can buy the equivalent tube tester in uh, the States for sort of something like this for about 50, 60 quid. I had to pay a bit more than that for it. But it has come with um, the original. Um, data charts which are nice with all the charts all the information on mainly covering uh, the uh, United States uh, lists of air, um, valves you know the the US numbers the 12 AX 7s and things like that it's got the original um, manual assembling manual of how to build it uh, which is nice and it shows you sort of points and point and work wiring and how to uh, how to wire it properly and you can see someone's been through and done a checklist on it to uh, to make sure they've done the, the correct everything correctly. There's a schematic, very simple. Um, switching uh, selectable uh, secondary for the heater element. You've got some um, neon supply here for checking shorts, and then you've just got the the high tensions rectified. There's not many components in there. Most of them are wire wound resistors. There's a capacitor here that's fine, and you've got a selenium here that tests okay as well. Produces the I think that's the high voltage supply. A couple of bulbs inside, and then you've just got this long rack of switches here, which is the switches on the top here. So it all looks pretty good inside. It's and it's been nicely wired. It's been a, a quality job. Someone's obviously knows what they're doing. So that's quite nice to have, and it shows you how to use a cable tie if you're uh, not bright enough to work that out. I would have thought someone who could build this probably knows how to use a cable tie, but very interesting anyway. Um, and there's, as I say, there's this the, the tube chart. This is probably the original tube chart from oh 1978. That date's got on there. Um, this has replaced. Oh, this one replaced the tube charts from March 1975, and this is the first, the first 78. So it's obviously a later edition. Um, it's got a couple of amendments to the roll chart by the looks of it. Here, there's a couple of printouts. Oh, here we go. Now, this is useful because I found this actually on the internet and I wonder if someone's uh, scanned this, this in. This has got all the, uh, the European valves in it, like the ECC81s and the UCCs and uh, things like that. You know, the sort of the numbers we're more familiar with in this country. Um, lots of information on valves. So we've got lots of, uh, quite a large listing of valves. That's good. Coming to the valve tester itself, um, you can see Pretty good nick actually. Uh, it was a bit grubby. I've cleaned. Uh, I've taken the face off and cleaned that up and uh, cleaned the plastic up. There's no nasty scratches on it. There are a few scratches here and there where valves have been put in and out. I think. Um, the uh, it's got a roll chart system here. Now the as you can see here, it's a bit flaky, and it, this is basically a gear that meshes onto two other little gears on two pulleys here. So you've got two pulleys that run either side with the paper chart on them. And this meshes into both these gears, but because the uh, machining quality isn't that great, the valve slide, the the uh, gears m jump out of mesh every now and then. And what happens is it slips and causes the uh, the uh, chart to become loose. So as you can see there, it's sort of it's slipping every now and then. Now I'm going to have to possibly take that apart and um, remanufacture something with a bit better gear on it, um, maybe a bit tighter tolerance. Because at the moment I can't really see a way ahead of adjusting that because there's no way of adjusting the backlash in the gears. you basically got a um, three point, you've got the, the screw shaft that screws this to a bracket here that you can see the two screws, that screws to a bracket there, and then you've got two holes at the bottom where the roller's shaft goes through and they're just running in plain aluminium and obviously they're worn a bit as well so they're all a bit sloppy. Um, but it all seems to work. It's running off a uh, an, an isolate and a step down transformer at the moment um, on the wall because obviously it's 110 volts. The plan is to actually fit a uh, auto transformer or step down inside it um, at a later stage. But at the moment now, I'm just really was going through to see um, see how it worked. 
Now I've just uh, been going through some vowels to find it, just to find the easy, so I don't have to work out the translation. This is 1287. Um, and we'll give this a test and basically what you do is it's quite straightforward. You switch the, switch the set on uh, and adjust it for uh, the, the line line so the needs are pointing right in the middle of the scale and that's your line voltage um, and then I'll just go through the uh, setup procedure in the, uh, in the manual to explain how to do it so we're looking for a 12887 was it? this is a 12887 now what you're supposed to do before you turn it on and I, which I have done already is check the settings First which says T, which I think it represents what sort of valve it is, and it's a triode. So we're looking for switch A, so here's the, our switch position, A, B, C, D. So that's switch A and is 2, and that's switch A there. Uh, switch B is 8, which is heater voltage. I don't know why they just didn't put the voltage there, but anyway, that's what they've done. That's heater voltage, which is equivalent to 6.3. Switch C needs to be in position 9, so switch C in position 9, that needs to go to C, that's your C line here. Okay, now, it's not as straightforward as the sink the, the, uh, call, but um, we'll get there. Uh, switch D is at 14, which is a rear stat, which is set to 14. Uh, and then cathode shorts, slide the switch to to test 8, so switch 8 goes to test 8 there should be no cathode shorts which is good and to test it you press 6 and 7 6, 7 and then press the and it does nothing and that's because I'm doing something wrong run through this one more time if we've got heaters glowing 1287 <clears throat> 2 yes 8 correct C is in 9 is in test mode oh I know what I'm doing this was in that position there you go and there's our test you see it's uh, it says 70 70% 70 but um, it shows it in the good 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 sign reading anyway so that's that seems to work let's move over to the other section so it's two eight nine fourteen three and it's one and two as opposed to so what I'll do is I'll take those back to there and we're going to test uh, we're going to test the second section so we want to do Shorts on, th on three, test, no, and then one, two to test, and then we'll check the emissions again. And you see that section of the valve's good. So, although not the most elaborate and the most expensive uh, valve tester, it should be useful for testing um, quite a lot of the, uh, the, more, the less common valves that uh, I have got. You know, sort of some of the valves weren't covered, as I say, in the uh, Sencor. Um, uh, yeah, I don't a nice little valve test. I'll quickly show you inside, see what it's like. Let's just turn it off. And the the wall wart thing I'm using, the step down transformer at the moment, is actually getting quite hot, and I think it's uh, I'm probably exceeding its uh, rated capability inside. It's obviously only rated about 60 60 watts. So it's probably using close on that. As you can see inside, let's take the tripod. Come off the tripod and look at the side. And as you can see, it's all quite nicely wired. This is the uh, the mains transformers in here, and it's all sort of nicely wired into this. This is the selector switch for the heater current or heater voltages. This is our obviously our inline uh, switch. Which is switch C. Uh, we've got here the roller chart um, and the wiring at the top. Is there's the big rear step which uh, just basically drops the mains voltage. Uh, there's the capacitor I was talking about, and that's testing OK, that's, that's good. Um, it's quite nice, it's got a clear back to the meter as you can see there, so uh, 
lets a bit of light through if you're working in a dingy environment. And that's that other rear stat at the back. If I around here, you can see what I mean by the gear meshing here. Um, the light is brilliant, but you can see that it's all a bit, it's all a bit wibbly wobbly, and it's not, it's not great. It's not sort of catching on the, uh, and you can see that shaft slightly bent. See it's slipping on the gear there. So something's going to have to be done with that to try and improve the, uh, the meshing of the uh, gears. And I'm not really sure how I can do it. I can't really move but this gear any closer because it's, it's it'd be me drilling into another hole. I suppose what I could do is mount a plate on the back of this plate and then just make a slidable, adjustable sort of um, gear so I can actually adjust the mesh on it. That would probably be the easiest thing to do. So uh, maybe have a long a plate of aluminium here and maybe lock it into this screw and then I can just slide it up and down and actually adjust the, uh, the backlash in the gears. That will probably be the way ahead with this. But yeah, I mean inside it's okay. The wiring's not bad at all actually. It's very tidily wired. Um, though there are a couple of slight tears in the uh, paper charts. I'm going to try and repair from the back so you won't see anything. Um, and the uh, wonky roller on the other end, this end here, there is a split. It, these are wooden um, poles, little pegs that run through. Uh, one of them split, so I'm going to have to try and repair that. Um, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I could probably make something out of a, I don't know, an old piece of bamboo. Even maybe would work. But uh, I'm sure we can find something, a bit of wooden dowel, to replace it. Uh, and as inside, it's a wooden box with a, a hardboard back. Um, plenty of room to put a uh, step down transformer in, so that's that's going to be easy enough to do. And uh, a bit of a clean up, and it should be a nice bit of kit. Thanks for watching.